Welcome to Dixie Storytime World. A little reader's friend. Millie meets the dinosaurs at the Natural History Museum. This book is about punctuation and about building essential reading skills at home. If you'd like to buy a copy of this book for your home library or for school, the link is available in the description at the bottom of this video. How to use this book. Welcome to a little reader's friend. This book will focus on punctuation. It will begin by explaining how to use full stops, commas, question marks and exclamation marks. Don't forget, as you read through, look out for the punctuation. London is full of museums. Do you see that little purple marker at the end of the sentence? Full stops are used at the end of a sentence. You see the little purple mark at the end of this question? Where will Millie go today? Question marks are used at the end of a question. Millie was very worried indeed. Exclamation marks are used to show a strong feeling or emphasize a loud noise. Popping punctuation. Now, as this is an audio version of the book, you can't actually circle on your screen. So with the help of an adult, you're going to put the video on pause and copy down the sentences. Find and circle the full stops, question marks or exclamation marks. Number one, what about the dinosaurs? Number two, Millie worried all the way to the museum. Number three, watch out, Sophie. Can you punctuate the following sentences using full stops, question marks or exclamation marks? Number one, what about the dinosaurs, she pondered. Number two, straight into the dangerous Diplodocus. Number three, the ginormous Diplodocus loomed over Millie's head. Punctuation. Don't worry, Millie. Quotation marks show when a person is speaking. She crept slowly through the front hall, fearing the worst, barely daring to breathe. Commas show a short pause or are used to list things. Millie's head. Don't worry. Apostrophes are used to shorten words by replacing certain letters and show possession. Add the speech marks, apostrophes or full stops below. Dippy the Diplodocus was a herbivore, explained Mummy. Come on then, shall we visit the other dinosaurs? It's Mummy, just in time. Millie's mind wandered all night. You could even try copying the activities in the front of this book using other sentences from the story. London is full of museums. Where will Millie go today? The Natural History Museum Millie had not slept a wink. Her thoughts wandered all night. What about the dinosaurs? She pondered. Millie worried all the way to the museum. Do the dinosaurs really gobble up little children? She thought. The museum walls seemed to reach for the skies. The dinosaurs must be enormous, marveled Millie. She crept slowly through the front hall fearing the worst, barely daring to breathe. The ginormous Diplodocus loomed over Millie's head. It must have had huge menacing teeth, thought Millie. Millie marvelled as her little sister Sophia zoomed noisily past. Crash! Straight into the dangerous Diplodocus. Watch out, Sophia, cried Millie, 
Dinosaurs are dangerous. Don't worry, Millie, said a friendly voice. Phew, thought Millie. It's Mummy, just in time. Dippy could have gobbled me up. Dippy the Diplodocus was a herbivore. That means she ate plants, not animals or little girls. Also, she was 15 feet tall, so she was much bigger than us. I don't think she would see us, explained Mummy. But what about the other dinosaurs, like the Triceratops and its enormous horns? What about the T-Rex, exclaimed Millie. What if? The Triceratops horns were mostly for defence. They had three horns and a large frill around their neck for protection. The Triceratops were also herbivores, explained Mummy. Don't worry, Millie. All the dangerous dinosaurs, like the T-Rex, went to sleep with the rest of the dinosaurs 65 and a half million years ago. Hmm, thought Millie. Did the dinosaurs really fart so much that they made the earth too warm? Did they then all fall asleep? Some of the gases in the Earth's atmosphere trap heat from the sun. There's a real theory that the dinosaurs farted a lot, making the Earth too hot, explained Mummy. We now think it was a huge asteroid that made the Earth too warm for the dinosaurs. So they all went to sleep. Millie pondered for a bit. Is it true that the Stegosaurus's brain was in its bottom? <laughs> no, Millie, laughed Mummy. People used to think that because its head was so small. It must have had a very small brain. It probably wasn't very clever. Come on then, said Mummy. Shall we visit the other dinosaurs? Will you visit the museum? Are you brave enough? The end. Thank you for listening and learning. If you'd like to stay up to date on all my videos, ask a grown-up to click on the big red subscribe button. I'll see you soon in another adventure. Remember kids, always be good, polite and kind. Music